Hi, um, my name is Rajesh Pavitran and I am the CEO of um, Boon Tech. And I'm here today with Jason Blood, um, the CEO of uh, a Proxy Valent. Hello, Jason. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. And I do appreciate um, you joining us. And this is about a new partnership uh, between Boon Tech and, and Proxy Card. And we think that there is a lot of synergy and um, features we can use to help each other's project as well as our customers. So a little bit about uh, Boon Tech. Uh, Boon Tech is a, a freelance job platform on blockchain. And uh, we are actually competing with a couple of major corporations, with billion dollar companies like Upwork and Fiverr. And <clears throat> our advantages of, ab about this uh, competitors are we don't have any service fee. Uh, our competitors charge 20% service fee. We have artificial intelligence integrated platform for ranking and reviews. All of our competitors have like five star reviews. We have a score between one to 100 and none of the competitors have um, live language translation, um, but we do. Uh, so there is no language barrier and as well as we are um, using AI for uh, identity protection, which means there is no manual intervention in our platform to verify your identity and uh, our platform is very safe and secure and your private data will be uh, protected. And um, we also don't have any fluctuations in cryptocurrency on our platform. Um, we have something called Boon Dollars, which we is pegged to USD. So uh, anybody who hires or get um, get revenue from our platform can actually calculate their uh, revenue model um, revenue model without any fluctuation in, in the uh, in the cryptocurrency world. So we are um, actually I, I don't know any other platform who does this. I think which is really important for the mainstream adaptability of our of any blockchain project. So uh, in this um, in this business venture, um, Proxy will help us a lot, but I will let um, Jason uh, talk a little bit about your project and then we will go from there. Jason, uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about your project and then we can discuss about our business use cases, how we can work together? Sure, sure. Uh, we started out with trying to tackle the um, complexities that come with cold wallets and, uh, and the ease of use of a mobile wallet. Uh, so we, our, our primary focus when we started this was how do we make it easy for people to use cryptocurrency but keep it as secure as possible. Uh, so one of the things we do, our primary focus, is to turn the, the, the transaction process into a multi-factor process. So it's a cold wallet mixed with a hardware wallet, if you think of it that way. It's got the ease of use of the software wallet, so you can just log in and start doing transactions right out of your wallet. But we have a second factor. We have a uh, it's like two-factor authentication that comes with the card. So your private key is never in one place at one time. We break things up. So there's a lot of uh, stuff going on behind the scenes to keep it really uh, secure. Um, but at the same time, it's super easy to use. So you can just quickly with a tap of your uh, NFC card, that's, that's what we uh, primarily use. Or if you don't want the physical card, you can use uh, like thumbprint or you know some of the built-in security on the mobile device to authenticate any transaction. Uh, so it's like, you know, if it's thumbprint, you can think of it as like Apple Pay for, for crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, but Or if you want an NFC card, so then it's broken up in two physically different things. Uh, that also helps too. It's a second factor for authentication. That was our, our initial goal. That's what we built. Uh, we wanted to keep it super easy for people to use, um, but uh, again, super secure at the same time. Uh, so, you know, none of the information is ever stored in one place. It's all, you know, all broken apart. So if I were to, you know, steal your card, for example, or your proxy card, not going to do you any good because you need to be able to log in through a mobile application and combine the two together uh, with you know everything being authorized. You, know, you can think of it as like a, a second factor when you log in, so we make sure it's tied to your device and all these different things. So there's lots of steps, but they're all very simple. And once it's set up, 
uh, it's super secure and super easy to use. And then with that as a base, you know, we're now expanding out into really building more of a kind of a social network around uh, this idea so people can send each other cryptocurrencies back and forth in a messaging system that we already have built, but we're looking to soon enhance that with more of a social, a full social network that's built on top of that. Uh, and then other currencies, you know, they can leverage our system. So, uh, you know, I could, for example, make a request and uh, for someone to send me a token, and I could just tap their card on their phone or any kind of receiver if it's a merchant or something like that. Uh, I can even hand out uh, a card to, for example, my teenager who wants to go shopping, and and uh, I'll get a notice on my phone that she's trying to buy something, and I can approve it myself as a second factor. Things oh, like great. So uh, basically you said that you have a hardware aspect to it as well as a software aspect to it, right? That's right, yeah. And, and this is just like another Visa card. We can put, carry it in your wallet. Right, right. So the cards have you know, encoded some information on it that's, that's only partial of what's needed to approve a transaction. The other parts contained in the, in the cloud behind your login. So you have to bring the two things together to approve a transaction, but independently they're not good enough. So that's how it acts as a second factor. Okay, and, uh, so yeah. if, if you so let's say that if you lose both, uh, what happens if you lose both the uh, phone as well as the wallet? Is there any way we can recover it? Yeah, so there's separate processes. You, um, you create a passphrase when you first uh, initially set up your, your account with us. Okay. And the passphrase can be used to download the, set, the second factor after you log in. So there, yeah. the first factor is just your username and password, which is the email address and password. Right, right. And Second factor is that. Yeah. So it is just like um, a ledger uh, where you have the code in a piece of paper. So you have the same system in your uh, wallet too. That's right. As, a, okay, as an absolute backup. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, for for this to work, you said that you can use you can send your a teenage girl to shopping. And mm -hmm. uh, what are the which are the merchants you actually accept these cards? So the they comes with the, the card itself will come with a QR code on the back that they can use. Mm -hmm. It's also an NFC card. So if they if their point of sale system supports either of those texts, which a lot of them do, uh, they can just scan you scan the QR code or the NFC uh, and reader, and then it sends it to our system, and our system broadcasts that out to the end user. So everything works through a mobile device. So uh, the primary account holder, let's say the parent in that case, would get a push notification on their phone that you know somebody's trying to buy something from a certain store. And you want to, and then they go into the app and they can approve it. Um, so you know if they see something weird, you know obviously that's not accurate, and they can just say no and just decline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I understood the security aspect of it, but I was just trying to figure out the the adaptability aspect of it. Um, so you guys. Uh, this is all in crypto, correct? That's right. And and any and what are the pairs you guys are using? Um, any um, so I know that you have a token, uh, but you you might have some some pairing right with some BTC or ETH or any other currencies. Right. So uh, that's what we're opening up to. Uh, we're we're bringing in other projects that would be interested in listing their token with us. Um, so uh, there's. Uh, EBTC is our, our first partner. We have our own token, of course, and there's, it works with uh, any ERC20 token. Mm. Um, you know, so Ether, just, Ether is... is mm -hmm. it's use, an you can use system. Ether. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And, and, and BTC? Uh, that's some Bitcoin and other uh, su uh, complete systems like Litecoin and things like that. We're looking to add those in the near future for okay. support. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why, why would somebody uh, should, so I know that there are a lot of wallets out there and you mm -hmm. might, ha you have so many competitors. Why would somebody use your product above others? A uh, couple different reasons. Obviously the, the convenience and the security for any transactions that, that, that it comes with. Uh -huh. uh, so you, it's easy to use, but it's also, you know, super secure at the same time, which is a good odd thing to try to balance when you're when you're building systems like this mm -hmm. uh, but also because you can make uh, payment requests to other people through the system just knowing you use like them. paypal mm -hmm. that's right oh, just okay. like PayPal. yeah 
Um, so, you know, you can build other systems around it. You don't have to keep track of wallet IDs or anything like that. You can, mm -hmm. uh, I can make a, a request to you, hey, can you send me something and then you can approve it. So uh, it works really well with any sort of platform, whether you have usernames or other, other IDs to identify people uh, as opposed to just a wallet address. So you have it for both iOS and Android? That's right. Okay. No, Windows, I think Windows, no one is really care about, right? Right. We, we are building a plug-in for Chrome. Uh, uh, so, oh, oh, okay. But is, yeah. that, is that secure? Like Chrome, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big fan of plugins, basically, because it's easy to hack it, you know? Right. Well, because our system, uh, in the case of a, of a plug-in, you know, remember, it's a two steps. So when you make a payment, actually what will end up happening is your phone will buzz, letting you know that, hey, somebody's trying to make a payment to your account, do you approve it? And you have to use your card to approve it. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, in the case of a plug-in or even a website, if they want to leverage our system, they never have uh, access to any of your, like, even your yeah, wallet. I, I, yeah, I understand the two-phase of your um, application, but um, I was just saying that, you know, it is e more easy to hack a plugin rather than a website. Right, that's right. But like I said, the plugin itself wouldn't actually connect even to the blockchain. It would just ma um, make a request to our system saying, you know, this address would like a payment from this username. Oh, oh, oh. So it's more more like easy to access your website through plugin. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay, I got it now. All right. Um, okay. So. Uh, who are your, is there anything else exists in the, uh, exists currently, which is your major competition? Well, you know, there's lots of different wallet apps, but they're, they're pretty much, you know, all the same. They just, uh, they do the same sorts of things. There are very few that are on iOS because Apple has a lot of restrictions. Um, yeah, I know that. Yeah, it, it took a while for our app to get approved by Apple um, because mm -hmm. Apple doesn't like blockchain. Yeah, it's not clear their long-term plan with that. Uh, I know that they have a certain set of things that they have approved, and I think they'll come around to it. But uh, you know, yeah, it's I a know. <laughs> yeah. So you know, when we did the project, you know, we we kind of like halfway through our sale, uh, our app got approved. Our Apple app got approved. So until then, we had the Android as well as the web platform, but we didn't. We submitted it. They will. I, I. I don't know. They will come up, come back for like very small, minor things, um, mm -hmm. and it delay the process. But yeah, basically that is what I thought. Apple is not really a big fan of blockchain apps. I don't know <clears throat> the exact reason. Maybe if uh, feel threatened. I don't know. But <clears throat> yeah, so they are not really a big fan of blockchain. But anyways, you got it approved. That is that is all it matters. You know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you have your own blockchain, or do you use Ethereum blockchain? Well, how how do you how does it work? Say that again. I'm sorry. How how does it work? Do you have your own blockchain, or do you use Ethereum blockchain? We use the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. Uh, yeah, and as we add tokens to our platform, we will look to integrate to other uh, chains as well, if, if necessary. You know, Litecoin, Bitcoin, things like that. Yeah. So that's also uh, adding those things take a little time. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin will be a good addition, as well as there are some privacy coins, you know, so uh, like Monero and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people, I think people are very much uh, excited about uh, privacy to privacy um, currencies um, mm -hmm. because I don't know. Uh, everybody wants to be anonymous. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and, you know, as we grow, we're, we're looking to add more social elements to our application, uh, connecting users, because everyone has a username. Uh, so it, it, it's a step removed from, say, just a wallet address or something like that. So you can send a user uh, token through our system currently uh, in, a, in a message system back and forth, but we'll look to, we're looking to enhance that part. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, we're also looking for uh, interesting projects that we we love to work with, so uh, we can offer that as a so. Pop. Yeah. So you you said about the social aspect, social media aspect of it. Is there any example you can just throw out a a brand name or something so that I can visualize it? 
Um, so right now, I know that you are a valid and you also have like a social media. So how do you compare to some other social media we already know? Uh, well, upcoming, which is um, right now we have a messaging platform uh, okay. built into this. So it's just user to user messaging and you can send token back and forth to another person. Okay. Uh, right how do you how do you verify a so if let's say that I want to send a message to you on 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 the proxy card? Um, how do I know that it's really you? Uh, great question. So one of the things that we are building is is a process to verify accounts. That's going to come along with our uh, the growth of our social platform that we're building. So similar to Twitter. Uh, we're looking to do that so that we can yeah, bring like in... Yeah, the tick mark on Twitter. What's that? Yeah, so on Twitter, you can have like a tick mark um, exactly. if there is if the user is verified. That's right. Okay, That's something exactly. like that? Yes, exactly. That's what we're building. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, so that, that uh, it is so important because, you know, Telegram doesn't have like a tick mark. And people have lost a lot of money when we did the token sale because uh, some so many people kind of like act like, like my profile, I've, I had a lot of fake profile uh, when we right. when we done the token sale, and Telegram doesn't have something like that, and it's it's very important because um, otherwise you don't know, you know. Uh, we are, we're building another as well as just like Twitter style where you can follow individuals. We're building a platform similar to Telegram. We're calling and very similar. We're going to have tools for ICOs built right into it. So you can just bring people into your, your, your space, which is like a telegram room, but you'll have, everything will be verified. So you'll know that, hey, I can participate, I can donate ETH and get token back right through that platform. And I don't have to worry about sending it to the wrong place or anything like that. So we're, we're all, all these social platforms that are really trying to shut down crypto that, you know, Google and, and Twitter oh. and Facebook. Yes, they're yes. a little hot. Yeah, so they are. Every, every big corporations are very hostile to crypto. For example, when we did the sale, um, Facebook has no restriction uh, promoting the, the blockchain projects. But right now, Facebook doesn't allow that. Uh, Twitter, the same. Google, the same. Um, Pinterest, the same. So it is very difficult now for uh, blockchain projects to raise money uh, because... Uh, the regular social media is not a big fan of uh, blockchain. They, I don't know what is going on. They are so much threatened by this uh, industry, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. so we, I, I think there is an opportunity there for all the blockchain companies, you know, to come together and build something like Facebook or Twitter. And the only thing missing is the, the user um, aspect, the user, user base aspect of it. But I think gradually it will grow. But these companies are very, very hostile to, to blockchain. Right. So you yeah. are building something like that. Exactly right. Yep. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it'll end up hopefully so, replacing Telegram because instead of just having a place for everyone to come together and speak, uh, it'll also be a place where the project can manage the, not just the ICO process, but if you want other things like donations and things like that. Because every user in our system is tied to a wallet. Uh, it automatically makes it easy for that type of transit. Those types basically of transit. Basically, have money people. <laughs> exactly. Okay, got it. Yeah, that that would be actually a great idea. You know, um, mm -hmm. so right now, nobody knows who you are in the sense that, um, especially for you know, if you are trying to invest together or trying to. Um, uh, go to a, a, a platform where you have no idea who, who they are. There is no identity aspect to to anybody, in, 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 especially on Telegram, you know? All right. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so, so what what any other aspects which is complete breakthrough in, in this field which you don't find it in any other project? Well, you know, just... The, by virtue of uh, the way that we handled accounts, the way that we handled the wallets and splitting it up and, and the security with the card and things of that nature, it opens up a lot of opportunities uh, to do all the things that we're doing. You really can't build systems just strictly off wallets. Uh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that is absolutely right. Um, so um, do you have like a revenue model? Uh, do you charge any fees? How, how does it work? 
Right, so if we're, from a merchant service standpoint, we're looking at a 1% fee. Uh, so we're, we're going to build out some tools for merchants too. There's things like, uh, you know, when you purchase something online, it'd be great to get a tracking number. It'd be great to have the money held for, until it ships, in, in some cases to build some trust. So we're, we're building that too so that you can get, you know, you, you don't get charged until the tracking number is available and things like that if you want to buy. Um, some people like that, some people not so much, depending on what they're using uh, uh, crypto for, but, you know, we're building tools for that. Uh, and that's one of the, the ways that we can make money. Um, and th there's other little things that we've talked about, like tools for ICOs, tools for yeah. projects. Yeah. Uh, there will be some small fees in there uh, for oh, us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ICO, if you do um, ICO through your platform, that is a huge uh, revenue model because... I know that ICO companies will pay a lot uh, to get more investors, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, so that is a good good revenue vertical there. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry I interrupted you. So what what else? Yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, I, there's the ICO thing like you mentioned, and then with the merchants is a big one. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's a sale platform. So really, it's, a, you know, primarily a social network, but you can sell things. So a longer term, you're going to build out a marketplace. I don't know if you've ever seen Facebook's mar marketplace. It's kind of a similar idea where, you know, individuals can go and sell things. But if I want to just do it within a one-to-one uh, -one, uh, conversation with you and I don't want to post it in a store setting, we'll have that uh, earlier on. So I can just, like I said, even do it with an escrow so it's held until it's shipped or something like that. But it would be within a user-to-user -user messaging system. We already have a user-to-user -user messaging built in, but we're going to add some uh, added features for selling products or services and things like that. So just one-to-one. -one. Uh, and then there's just the 1% fee for us uh, for revenue on that uh, to help manage. You, so we talked about uh, working together as uh, on, a, on a partnership basis. So I was thinking about uh, using, um, you, you know, so you have uses which is already verified. And you might have um, users who is looking for, you know, business owners um, or people who I'm talking about my customers. My 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 customers are basically business owners and people with skills who are looking to earn a little bit more from what they are making. And some are actually full time freelancers. Okay, so um, I was so since like we discussed earlier, um, we can actually expose our uh, review system. Um, our um, whatever the reviews we are doing are in your platform so people um, so in especially on, on a social media kind of platform kind of settings uh, people mm -hmm. can actually um, if they see people each other in in your platform they can know that oh this this guy has some skills you know so you, you can have like a a, a a, a universal kind of review system so that uh, our reviews, our, uh, the reviews they earn in our system actually carry on to another platform without them doing anything. So by just right. click of a button. I think we need to, we can integrate that. Mm -hmm. and, That'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so you, you, so you, we talked about um, listing some of the services can you just explain a little bit about that? Like, what kind of services can we list in your platform? Services uh, you know, for merchants and things like that. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, so you you send that actually. Uh, you send that in the message that uh, we can have like a listing services on your platform. Um, I, I don't know what you have in mind. Right, so we can we can talk about things like uh, we can do things like the profiles can can link, so I can have the rating that you uh, from your system right in the profile. I think it's a social network, so when I look at a, a particular user's profile in a proxy when I'm when I'm doing my my social thing, I can say, oh, they're they're on Boon Tech. This is their rating. Uh, you know, one tap, I can go right over there you know, into either a different app or however you want it to link and uh, hire them. You know, to do a certain yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that people can actually rate from your platform because in our platform they have. You cannot rate somebody without paying them. In the sense that, uh, okay. you know, let's say that you hire me, you don't mm -hmm. hire me. You have some in debt against me. Uh, you cannot rate me. 
you know, you need to hire me. I have to agree to do the job. Only then you can rate me. But I, at the same time, if I allow, so let's say that I'm on your profile and I allow my profile to be visible on your profile, that is possible. But, you know, a personal rating only if they work together. Right. Okay. So we, can we, we could display the rating. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like that is okay. what that is what I uh, like about. Uh, one thing I really liked about your platform is that you know our. Uh, so, for example, if uh, the your users starts to display our rating on your platform, that will give us a mm -hmm. lot of exposure. And it's the same yeah. thing with us too. We can have uh, your um, your business displayed in 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 our use cases in our users profile. You know, so that will give you a lot of exposure. Um, right. So it's kind of like uh, working together uh, to have more people know about your brand, you know. So we need to have like a brand which is on your face all the time, every day, you know. So that right. that, that that is what this is all about, you know. Um, that is how you build a brand and grow your product, you know. So right. uh, yeah, that is what I was I was mentioning. So we can I definitely have the reviews displayed on on each other's profile. Um, so mm -hmm. do you have any other services, kind of? Um, you said that you have, you might have some services like a marketplace. Um, and any anything else you have in mind? Uh, that's our medium term plan. So, like Facebook's marketplace, where people can just, as individuals, sell different things. Uh, it's a little more complicated getting into point of sale systems and, and larger yeah. clients. And we're based in the United States. Uh, that's a little bit, a little bit off here in the United States for that to happen. Yeah. Uh, so more popular in, in uh, Asia and other places like that. So mm -hmm. okay. So what what what, what is we'll your? I'm sorry. What is your immediate plans? What does your roadmap look like? So in the next, uh, let's say about six weeks. It's actually it moves pretty fast. We'll be releasing our Spaces feature, and uh, what does that that's, mean? that's what does that mean? Spaces. It's similar to uh, like Telegram rooms. Uh, that's what we talk about for different projects. So they can they can create a place and. And not not only just like Telegram where they're just talking back and forth, but they'll have tools for, for their ICO and, and for things like that. Uh, so that's the idea there. And, and we'll also have the general feed that will come a little bit after that that's, that's similar to a Twitter mm -hmm. social network. Okay. Uh, so that I can follow you. and Because, you know, right out of the gate, it's already built, of course. Your user is attached to the wallet. So we don't have to do any extra work there. That's already built. Um, which yeah, opens yeah. Up all yeah, so you start from the payment, so which is really important because uh, mm -hmm. every every company, every business is about after your money, you know. So right. you have that covered up front. So anything mm -hmm. you build on top of that is just like an icing on the cake, you know. Yeah, exactly. And we're, we're, we're actively looking for projects who, you know, we yeah. think makes sense to work with and mm -hmm. expand and enhance. Uh, you know what we're doing, and, and what you guys are doing is fantastic. Uh, you know, I, thank you. Fiverr, I've used many times. It's great. To, you know. Uh, yeah, Fiverr charges like twenty percent fees, and then on top of that, they don't have. Um, you know, you can you have to talk to them in English. Uh, then you have to give all your history to Fiverr. Like, uh, if you are mm -hmm. using a credit card, you get to give your credit card number. Um, you have to give your home address, and if you're selling uh, in any platform, I never sold in Fiverr, but I sold in Freelancer. So on Freelancer, mm -hmm. you have to give your whole information. Um, you know your social security, your tax ID, everything. They have everything. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like Facebook. They have everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, they know every wherever you go. They are they are just following you. So you know, so we have a lot of advantages over such platform and and once we have a little bit more of blockchain adaptability i don't think that anybody will be using um a, a legacy platforms like fiber or upwork so you know right yeah so we have a long-term plan so that is the part of the reason i am um you know looking for active partnership with projects in the space i think all of our all of the projects in this space should be uh working together because you know we actually are a very small community if you look at the world population and right. we should help each other and, and make it more visible to everybody, you know? I agree. Yeah, and keep it simple for people and, you know, it's yeah, part yeah. of the environment. And we need more and more, more people into coming into blockchain, you know? So compared to last year, this year, 
the community is awesome. For example, last year at the same same time, if a Telegram group has like 4,000 people, that was huge. You know, today a Telegram will have like 60,000. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for a project. And people are like, oh, that's fine. Like that is kind of like normal. But it wasn't like a year ago, you know. Mm -hmm. So we are yeah. making a lot of progress uh, for sure. Um, yeah, so so that is that. And um, I think we covered all everything, right, Jason? I think so, yeah. You know? Yeah, so um, I would have, I think we need to have like a little bit of code change uh, to um, uh, display the, uh, the reviews on each other's platforms. So we have mm -hmm. developers, we can do that. I know that you're a developer or you have developers. Um, so you yeah. can probably have like a public web service or something and just read that and it should be it is it should be simple right mm -hmm. yeah so so that's all I have so do you have any any last um, statement to make or anything to address or anything to tell the people who watches this video you know it, uh, it's just it's good to see projects working together I think in general uh, that's really gonna help everybody ultimately uh, as opposed to just everyone, you know, sitting in a silo and doing their own thing and duplicating efforts and things like that. Uh, coming up with ways for different platforms to work together is really what's going to help everything uh, mature to a level that, like I said, we're just going to see explosive growth as the, as the platforms mature. So, you know, thanks for, for talking with us and we look forward to working with you guys and, and you know, Finding good synergy between our projects. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean that that's that's what I am uh, more uh, uh, focusing on right now. So we need to be on a little bit of exchanges as well. Uh, so we're doing that and trying very hard to uh, force more partnerships uh, with uh, companies where we can work together. One of the beauty about our project is, you know, we can partner with anybody basically because our customers are our business people and people with skills. And I think uh, every project have people in their customer base who has the same skill set. And in your case, uh, if you are in the blockchain, you need a wallet. You know, there is no question about it. And then it's not easy to carry Ledger all, all the time. Um, mm -hmm. This is one of your competitors, right? Ledger, Nano Ledger. It's mm -hmm. not really easy to use that, but it's very secure, but it's not really easy. But I think you solve that problem. You can carry it in your, in your wallet, right? All right. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and it has the same security features as Ledger, um, mm -hmm. but it's just just you can use it on, on the fly. That is amazing, actually. It's it's more groundbreaking than uh, it's kind of like BitPay. You have you ever tried BitPay? Do you know about BitPay, right? Uh, BitPay? Uh huh. Uh, no, I haven't I've never tried that. Oh, so BitPay is just like a card. Um, how so? How do you how do you compare to 10x? 10x is again a card. Right, so they, they piggyback on Visa. Um, okay. uh, we don't do that, so we're just, we uh, uh, make the whole uh, process right on top of like Ethereum's network as simple. So we don't hook into the Visa network at all. We, we just do it directly onto the blockchain. Um, I know that the Visa themselves have shut a lot of those projects down because they don't, they, I, I don't think they like it. Uh, <laughs> Um, so Visa but, can um, actually shut down 10x. Yeah, yeah, I think they have. They have. Last time I checked, yeah, the, there was a singular company that a lot of those guys were using. We did some research on this uh, that that would issue cards and allow them to do um, transactions on the blockchain, kind of uh, like what they're doing. Uh, but you know, Visa runs that network. Ultimately, they have the, the full control, and Visa went in and said, "Yeah, no, we don't want." Crypto, you know, crypto on the block, uh, you know, on our network at all, and uh, a lot of them got shut down. So they lost permission to do it, and that's one of the, the drawbacks of that system. Of course, is you're going through a third party like that. So they're, if they're not fully on board, you know, it's not going to work. And uh, even so, um, some of them they were only available in certain countries and things like that. Anyhow, uh, so oh. none of them here in the United States. But I, I didn't know that, but 10x, the value, the token value went down? I, I didn't check. I, I'm, I don't oh. own 10x. <laughs> Is that? I haven't watched the token value of, of 10x, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're up to. I know that they're so, already shutting down so the blockchain. So I, in, a, in an ideal situation, if I walk into a store um, and if I want to buy something using your card, how do they get the money, the business? 
Right, right. So they, they would. You know, it's a it's a bit involved because they have to work with us uh, to set up a merchant service. We, we act like a merchant service with them, and most of them already have some sort of NFC card reader or something along those lines. That there's, a, there's different ways to take payments anyhow uh, with their point of sale system. So they would just hook into our system to do the transaction, and we would translate it into U.S. dollars right away for them or whatever. So where currency. do you where do you get the U.S. dollars? Say that again. Where do you get the U.S. dollars? Do you so, have any any partnership with any exchange? Yeah, uh, we've been talking to a couple of exchanges to get that up and running. Yeah, there's some that'll do it uh, pretty much instantaneously for you with a small fee, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, so th that's what we're looking to do. The online retailers, we were starting with them because it's a little simpler. There's not a point of sale system involved there, so. You know, they're just there's, but there's a lots of those. I, I, I hate so to they, say. So they they accept crypto. These online retailers. There's there's, there's um, online merchant services that take crypto already. That, you know, so we would be doing something similar to that. Uh, but again, the major difference is just our system of doing it in two factors as opposed to one. But um, again, we're we're looking at that, and then. But the again, point if, of sales, you, if you if you do. Uh, to the USD, then you need to work with an exchange or you need to work with somebody like Visa or MasterCard, right? And you said that uh, partnering with Visa or MasterCard is not optimal in terms of launching yeah, no. the project. They won't do it. So we would, we would be working with an exchange that does some sort of uh, immediate transfer. Yeah, yeah, you know, we work with an exchange. We work with GDAX. So probably mm -hmm. you can try that as well. They have a good API. Uh, and everything you can easily integrate. Yeah. 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 So that's what we did because, you know, we have the same kind of situation in our platform where uh, we need stability inside our platform. So you work with GDAX API and, and Coinbase API to achieve that. Yeah. Coinbase is another one we're looking at. Uh, they're a little weird. Uh, you know, they, you talk to them and then just kind of <laughs> months later and then. I'll get back to you. <laughs> They're very busy. Uh, I know. I actually and Coinbase uh, is like that. They they are the market leaders, but they never integrated any other tokens other than Ether and Litecoin and BTC. You know, they could have shut down all the other uh, exchanges easily, but they didn't. You know, they just dropped the ball. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're hiring big time. Tell you that you know, I, I get stuff all the time. Yeah, I mean, almost all the exchanges uses the Coinbase API. I mean, that is the benchmark, you know. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And but you know they didn't do anything, anyways. What can we do, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just gotta keep moving. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I I love I like Coinbase because it's based in the US, so you know we don't have a lot of legal issues um, around that. So I like that. Anyways, um, so that's all I have, Jason. Um, so thank you very much for being with us. Then we will uh, make um, we will make this work. And, yeah. and, um, and And thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.